A couple of years ago, something strange happened. After a long coma, the OT security product market awoke and spilled out a flurry of new vendors and products. Over a short period of time, dozens of startups were founded to go after the ultra-conservative OT security market. All fueled by around about $500 million in venture capital, which is spread across 30 companies. What's strange about this, you might ask? Well, the strange thing is that all these companies sell pretty much identical products. All of them fall in the ICS detection space that can best be described as network anomaly detection for industrial control systems. Is that really a product category that the market was waiting for, like the COVID vaccine? Is that something so high in demand that it would easily support 30 vendors who will ultimately end up competing against each other by price? Not in my worldview, and I'm going to explain why. First, why would it be so important and valuable to detect cyber attacks in network traffic if there are so few of them in OT? Every sales pitch that bloats the actual number of OT attacks by including attacks that had nothing to do with OT simply proves the point. If you posit that not just 2, but 10, 20 or 100 OT attacks would justify spending for your ICS detection product, you are simply bad at math. 100 or even 500 attacks for the sake of the argument are such a low number when compared to the global number of OT installations that they don't register as even a small blip on the radar. Compare the situation with IT, where cyber attacks are plenty, and IT security is also constantly fighting for budget. Since every organization operating an OT environment also has IT, wouldn't it make more sense to invest the budget in more IT security and do the anomaly detection on the IT side? Don't get me wrong, I'm simply playing the devil's advocate here. The point is that this is a valid question that you cannot escape, especially when we consider the prevalent assumption that OT attacks start on the IT side, usually with a spear phishing campaign. If that is the case, why not invest more in IT security in order to catch and block infiltration attempts where they happen, rather than further down the road, south of the DMZ? Please engage in the following thought experiment. Imagine that right after Stuxnet was uncovered, you had invested in an ICS detection product. For the last 10 years, this product would not have detected any ICS attacks, since there were none. Well, that is outside of Ukraine and Saudi Arabia. For 10 years, your SOC analysts that had been using the ICS detection product would have done nothing but analyze false positive alerts. How many SOC analysts? Plenty. In her talk at the S4 conference, Accenture's Rebecca Moore gives a rare insight in headcounts and dollar figures involved. Now we need to pay our SOC. So I'm going to use U.S. wages, keeping in mind that if you deploy a SOC in a different country, obviously the wages are going to be really different. But proportionally, the results that I'm going to get to today are the same, so just bear with me. A level one OT SOC analyst could cost for that skill set about $50,000. So we have eight of those. Level two OT SOC skill set could cost around $100,000, and there's four of those. And then your level three OT SOC person could cost around $150,000 for that skill set. Now, keep in mind that an employee's wage is not actually the fully burdened cost to you as an employer. Usually that's about half of their wage added on, so I'm adding that on in hidden costs here. Also, we'll add another $120,000 approximately for your SOC ticketing software annual fees, the building costs, and then your SOC equipment costs. So what looks like around a $1 million run and maintain annual fee is more like $1.6 million if you're a one-site company, or if you have 10 sites, $225,000 per site. What if you would have spent your OT security budget on risk assessments and on continuously improving your protection instead? What about having put all the dollars into things like better network segregation, application whitelisting, OS updates, and security patching? Now, don't tell me that you will certainly have done both, because it's unlikely that your budget would have supported it. Unfortunately, picking OT security tactics is often an either-or decision. 
The second reason why the ICS detection value proposition is problematic is because we don't know how well they perform under actual attack. We don't have a track record. Unfortunately, Del Peterson's attempt to establish a test suite for ICS detection stalled and is really interesting to examine why, which I won't do here in the interest of time. Please see for yourself using the link in the description below. But even if we assume that your ICS detection product is perfect in detecting bad bytes, it might just not be able to see them because you didn't install it in all places necessary in the interest of cutting costs. I think we can all agree that we need to tap the network firewalls between each network level so that we get all north-south traffic visibility. But there's often a lot of debate about whether it's worth the extra investment to tap the east-west traffic as well. But I have seen an instance where removal media or a portable computer was directly connected to a level two component and it infected it with malware. And then that malware was not trying to communicate out to the internet, it was only communicating across that network level. So without, anomaly, without uh, the east-west traffic visibility, it would have been completely undetectable. The bottom line is, if and when that ICS attack actually happens at your organization, you probably shouldn't bet on your ICS detection product to actually see it. I believe that there is a market for ICS detection products, but I don't believe that it's large enough to support even half of the vendors that exist today. For some funny reason, vendors apparently don't want to differentiate into defensible niches. Their marketing message is pretty identical. Every vendor is a self-proclaimed leader and claims to sell the best product. But if every vendor is the best, you might just pick any of them and ultimately only consider price. The ICS detection bubble was certainly not created by the rapid and widespread adoption of revolutionary new technology. It was created by over-optimistic venture capital. The bubble is not necessarily bound to burst, but I think it will deflate substantially as vendors will find it increasingly difficult to raise new funding rounds. After all, venture capitalists have learned the hard way about the extremely long sales cycles that OT security experts knew about all along. They have also learned that valuations have been largely over-optimistic, as evidenced by the meager acquisition prices that the startups that have already been acquired managed to realize. The demise of ICS detection doesn't have to be a bad thing if it leads to a shift in focus. How about re-examining those old-school OT security tactics that are proven to work? You don't need a SOC to tell you how to fix your network architecture or how to do endpoint protection for your critical OT systems. Periodic risk assessments and continuous improvement will raise your security posture with certainty. If the disillusionment in ICS detection products will result in a renaissance of unsexy but rock-solid protection wisdom, it would be a very good thing. It would become an even better thing if you then consider topping your OT security off with a well-selected network anomaly detection product. So that's my opinion on the ICS detection bubble. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and please share this video so that we can have a broad discussion.